Welcome everyone, my name is Sasha Dines and I am a PhD student at the University of Stellenbosch and Sea Search Research and Conservation here in Cape Town, South Africa. And today I'm going to be talking to you about a rare and endangered dolphin species, the Indian Ocean humpback dolphin. So globally there are four species of humpback dolphin and they are all threatened. Here in South Africa we have the Indian Ocean humpback dolphin, Susa plumbea who ranges from False Bay here in South Africa through to the Bay of Bengal in India. And in South Africa, we have two subpopulations, the Northeast population in KZN, and then the South Coast population with little exchange between the two. And you can see here that there's a narrow range which they occupy in red. And you can really get an idea of how coastal and restricted the species ranges and why they're the most endangered species of marine mammal in South Africa. So the most recent work indicates that there are less than 500 humpback dolphins here in South Africa. And this is a really striking comparison to other well more known threatened terrestrial species whose ranges throughout the continent are more spread out and wide ranging. And it's clear that we're dealing with an extremely low numbers and an exclusively narrow linear range for this species down here in South Africa. For example, we can't just move them we can't move them out of their range and into another more suitable habitat. Current terrestrial conservation methods, they're highly managed and most of these options just don't exist for marine species. So with marine based solutions, it means that we have to protect the environment and not the species themselves. So in order to better understand this, we had to take a closer look at their distribution within this linear range. And when we found this, we found that they were even more coastal than previously thought. So existing literature says the humpback dolphin's theoretical range is within the blue line up to 25 meters water depth. But from data collected from MSc student projects from long-term boat-based and land-based survey work, humpback dolphin's range was even shallower than we had expected, further exacerbating their risk to certain coastal threats. We then overlap species presence with these possible coastal threats First of all, distance from slipways to look at recreational and boating activities and their influence on humpback dolphins. As we know that humpback dolphins have a preference for harbours, river mouths and estuary areas, we should overlap them with these high use areas. We also looked at coastal towns and villages, as these are all focused along the humpback dolphins range, and these come with increased levels of recreational fishing, pollution and surface runoff. And humpback dolphins have known to have the highest level of pollutant level of any cetacean, so it's clear that this overlap is of concern. And then finally, you can see fishing effort here seen in red. And in nearly every spot, it extends all the way through the humpback dolphins range. So it's clear that their linear range is littered with threats that this, this species simply cannot move away from. So if we take a step further out and look at current protective measures, here you can see the marine protected areas along the southern coast. And here I've overlaid movement of several individuals of humpback dolphins along this range. And so this data has come from the collation of 16 years of photo ID surveys throughout this region. Therefore, you can see that the protection that these MPAs actually provide only covers them so far. And unlike in terrestrial reserves, there's no fences around MPAs to keep the animals in and the humans out. So even though we've been able to identify what the risks to humpback dolphins could be, we still don't know to what extent each of these are affecting them. And we're seeing an increased number of animals with entanglement scars, shark bites, broken rostrums, and boat interactions. So current available data on the population health of humpback dolphins is distinctly lacking due to this small group size and low population numbers means that normal photo ID has really been ineffective at monitoring this species. And in, in addition, their preference for shallow habitats has put them in the direct area of the surf zone. So approaching these individuals by boat is also an extremely dangerous affair for researchers. So looking forwards, we've recognised a need for a novel method to more passively monitor the health of this species. So we've been developing a novel method to passively monitor individual humpback dolphin movements along this coastline, and this is based on recording their individual whistles. Dolphins are unique in that they have a type of whistle in their repertoire that is individually distinctive, and this whistle is called their signature whistle. 
and we can use these naturally occurring acoustic labels to passively monitor wild animals which has not yet been explored in the marine environment. So our aim is to deploy an array of underwater acoustic listening stations throughout their southern range and identify individuals as they move throughout this array. So we'll be incorporating methods such as SECR to look at density. With SEC, SECR, it's usually used in wider home ranges, but this linear application of the model is a novel application of this method in the marine environment. So we tested this method in a fine scale deployment earlier this year and deployed eight moorings a kilometre apart each. And so I'm currently working through those 14 days of continuous recordings, which is over two and a half thousand hours of data. But I'm using an automated species classifier program called PAMGUARD built by our postdoc Guy Freiner, and this will identify humpback dolphin encounters within our data set. So using this linear SECR, SECR model, I'm hoping to produce density estimations, such as these kernel distribution estimators, to better understand humpback dolphin movement and occurrence. So this is very much still a work in progress, and I'm looking forward to seeing what our Mossel Bay data shows. And I'm excited to share this work with you guys today, and look forward to taking your questions and discussing anything further. Thank you ever so much for listening and I look forward to your questions.